Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. We are not in studio because we are in the Costa Mesa Fairgrounds for Crossroads of the West, Costa Mesa. We're gonna have a lot of questions here regarding lawsuits and I wanna go through why some of them are more important than others. To do that, we have brought an attorney at Michelle & Associates. He's the co-author of the book, uh, the, gun, the Gun Laws book, Matt Cabero. Matt, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, if you guys didn't know, it's trade show season uh, for the firearms community. That means that the International Sportsman's Expo is happening up in Sacramento right now. Uh, we do have the Crossroads of the West Gun Show here uh, at the Costa Mesa Fairgrounds. Bart Hall will be happening uh, next week and then several weeks after. Just a lot of opportunities for people within the firearms community to come together. This one in particular, though, uh, is attached to a CRPA lawsuit. That CRPA lawsuit was BNL Productions uh, v. Bonta. A lawsuit that we obviously prevailed on and got a good decision, which is why uh, this gun show was able to go on. But I wanted to talk with you, Matt, about some of the questions that we're going to be getting here uh, at the gun show today, specifically in regards to the current laws that were put in place at the beginning of the year. First of all, why are you here today? Well, so it's interesting that you say that, uh, that I'm here today mostly to try and help people better understand what the laws actually are. And to sort of, you know, we have all these laws that get passed every year. And we hardly ever see any sort of educational efforts on the part of the enforcement uh, here in California, whether it's through the DOJ or otherwise, actually telling people how to actually understand it and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing under these laws. And so I'm here with CRPA today to sort of fill that gap that the state continually fails to fill whenever it passes any sort of new legislation or otherwise that, the, you know, it's, it, it shows lip service that they're just simply trying to pass as many laws as they can without actually telling people what they need to do to understand those laws and to make sure that they actually don't run into any, any trouble or run afoul of them. Well, definitely a constant that we could use within yeah. the community, but a great opportunity to connect with uh, not just the people, but also the vendors at the show to make sure that everything is in compliance. And, and speaking of that compliance, you know, these are these are lawsuits that we bring so that we don't have to comply with this stuff. But obviously, while the laws are in place, we want to comply uh, as much as possible. That ends up helping with our lawsuits. Uh, one of the big ones, um, that I just wanted to provide an update on. Uh, Senate Bill 1384, uh, that is the lawsuits Richards v. Bonta. We had a hearing last week uh, where the judge did come in with a, 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 a preliminary decision that looked like he was not going to grant us the injunction. Uh, what's the update on that lawsuit? Because that, that lawsuit is talking about surveillance cameras for FFLs having to record every transaction that they have, where they store the firearms, and also um, uh, being able to store that for a, 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 an entire year. That's a huge burden on FFLs. So uh, what have we seen any change with that? Yeah, so you mentioned the lawsuit, and I believe you interviewed Josh and the team uh, not too long ago, and they did a great job at the hearing. Uh, since that hearing, what has happened is the judge has issued uh, a request for further briefing from the state as to far as how the law actually impacts both at-home dealers and gun shows like, we are, like we're at here today. And I think that's a good sign, uh, given that following the, the oral arguments uh, that Josh made at the hearing, that... Uh, the judge is sort of reconsidering his tentative ruling that he issued prior to that hearing uh, on those aspects. And so it remains to be seen what he's actually going to do uh, as a result of that supplemental briefing that he's ordered and whether or not uh, we've been able to uh, sort of show him and convince him that the the issues at play here, particularly with involving the gun shows and how you know that's supposed to impact these types of events, um, is really detrimental to not only the shows themselves but the the vendors that show up here especially when we don't have any sort of guidance uh, from the actual law enforcement officials that are tasked with enforcing that namely the department of justice which we ask them you know plainly flat out you know what how does this law affect you know shows like crossroads and they have not given us a straight answer one way or another so well, if you want to talk about uh, the, the consequences of lawsuits, Crossroads certainly is one. Uh, we've got plenty of other lawsuits that are going, whether they are just to keep the status quo uh, or they are to 
uh, bring something back that we've lost. Let's talk about Senate Bill 2 really quick. There, there's really two aspects to this. One of the consequences that we've already seen from May v. Bonta, which was the, the challenge on sensitive places, is to keep the status quo. They're not currently enforcing any of that legislation for sensitive places, but they did come out and we had a massive response for the comments uh, in, the, in the Office of Administrative Law for the emergency regulations they were trying to attach to Senate Bill 2. What exactly is going on with that and what can the training uh, providers and community uh, in general expect uh, from what might come out of the Office of Administrative Law? Yeah, so we've actually, we've had some uh, great conversations with a lot of the issuing agencies. Uh, Solana County, Orange County, just to name a few, Riverside, uh, have been all sort of coordinating together to try and figure out what actually these new regulations mean and how they affect their individual CCW instructors. And some of the agencies, from our understanding, are now going to be start offering a, a post-certified class that historically was only open to uh, actual law enforcement. And so they're now opening it up to their individual CCW instructors as a means of complying or should say satisfying the California Department of Justice's regulations requiring instructors for CCW programs to have certain credentials uh, that the, the regulations require. Um, what I will say that if, if you are a CCW trainer, uh, training provider, uh, it's important that you coordinate with your issuing agency, uh, depending if it's a county or a police department, and, and work with them to better understand what they're actually going to require moving forward. Because right now, as it stands, a lot of the discretion and questions that are being asked are, are ultimately up to the individual sheriffs uh, still as far as how they're going to implement these new DOJ regulations. And so that, that sort of remains to be seen. And it's important to know that, you know, if it does become a significant bottleneck, uh, we will be looking at potential legal options as far as challenging the, uh, the, the regulations. But right now we need to see actually how all this sort of plays out. And, and it's important that those instructors that are affected by this, they, they work with their issuing agencies and they, they will work with you to the extent that they can and provide you guys as much information as they can and just continue to try and figure out uh, with your agencies what actually is going to be required as far as those uh, particular requirements are going to be enforced. As, as far as timetables are concerned, uh, you know, uh, the, the court system, you know, it, it can be straightforward sometimes. It isn't straightforward all the times, uh, you know, specifically for the Richards v. Bonta lawsuit. Uh, the judge did say he was going to come out in quick fashion with his, uh, with his decision. Uh, we've seen other other judges hold on to cases for a long time. I know that at one point Judge Benitez was holding on to four uh, Second Amendment lawsuits. He's still holding on to Rody, uh, trying to get a decision uh, there. So you do get a little bit of discrepancy that way. When we're talking about the legislature, you know, they've got deadlines for committees and, and a deadline for the legislative session. Haven't really talked a whole lot about timetables for the Office of Administrative Law. Um, you know, in, in your opinion or in your experience, um, what kind of timetables are they working with? Should we expect to see something uh, out of them as far as you know this being able uh, to be something that's enforceable uh, or not soon, sooner rather than later, or, or do they normally kind of take their time? Yeah, so, so the Office of Administrative Law, it depends on what type of regulatory proposal is in front of them. And so just, just to be clear, the, the DOJ CCW instructor regs have been now approved by the Office of Administrative Law. They don't really go through any much fan for as far as, ad as announcing that. They have their website, as we as we talked about last time, that will show what that what actions they've actually taken, and they just post that to their website just to update people on what what those are. But basically, once that's happened, typically then it goes to the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of State will then file it, and that, that's how regulations become officially adopted, so to speak. So right now, the Office of Administrative Law is now sort of done with the process, at least as far as the CCW regs are concerned. Uh, but we are hopeful that maybe the California Department of Justice will take the comments to heart and potentially propose an, a, a sort of an amendment or update to the uh, regulations that they've adopted. Uh, we've been trying to coordinate with them and contact the, the attorneys at DOJ to sort of get some clarification uh, from them. And they have told us that they've gotten a lot of questions on these. And so hopefully maybe at some point they might actually provide some further guidance, but that remains to be seen, unfortunately. Well, something so. we're certainly going to have to continue and pay attention to. Yeah. I, I know that you got uh, a lot of conversations that are going to be going on in here today, and you're a busy guy in general, so I want to say thank you very much for taking the time uh, to talk with us today. Of course. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. And guys, Crossroads of the West Gun Show in Costa Mesa is going on all weekend, so if you want to get out and get to a gun show that hasn't been here for a couple years now, 
engage in those Second Amendment conversations, uh, engage in purchasing some products to your liking or just come out and have a good old family friendly time. Uh, they are here at the at the Orange County Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa. Be sure not to miss it. Otherwise, as always, guys, it is helping with the algorithms. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so that you get notifications whenever we drop these videos. It may help you stay up to date with the laws that are currently being enforced in California. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.